Okay? And I told you guys that some of these might be a little shocking, but I'm going to go through them anyway. Uh, Zir ibn Hubais, Zir ibn Hubais radiallahu ta'ala anhu says that I asked Ubay ibn Ka'b radiallahu ta'ala anhu, uh, or I told Ubay ibn Ka'b that your brother in faith being Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, your companion Ibn Mas'ud was asked, when is Laylatul Qadr? You know what Ibn Mas'ud said? He said, whoever prays every night of the year will catch Laylatul Qadr. <laughs> SubhanAllah, that's his hikmah. You know, stop looking for the night. He said, pray to Hajj. He didn't even say, in Ramadan. He said, whoever prays Qiyamul Layl throughout the year will catch Laylatul Qadr. That's the only way to assure it. And some of the scholars, that, or some people took from that, that Ibn Mas'ud thought Laylatul Qadr was outside of Ramadan. But instead, he's just saying, look, pray every night, and inshallah you'll catch it. So Ubay ibn Ka'ab radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, you know, may Allah have mercy on Abu Abdul Rahman. He said he did that so that people wouldn't only pray for one night. He says, but I swear by Allah, without exception, meaning he's taking an oath by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it's the 27th night. He said, how could you say that? He said, by the indication, the sign that the Prophet ﷺ gave to us, the night after the 27th night, about the way that the sun would rise without having any ray in it, I swear by Allah that it's the 27th night. He swore by it. Now what makes this significant? Who is Ubay ibn Ka'ab by the way? This is sort of the subtlety that's lost sometimes. Ubay ibn Ka'ab is the one who leads the Sahaba in Taraweeh. Alright, just to put yourself in the historical context. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when he gathered the Sahaba behind one Imam, he gathered them behind Ubay ibn Ka'ab radiallahu anhu. So the, the Imam of the Sahaba said that Laylatul Qadr is the 27th night of Ramadan. So this history of the masjid just being packed on the 27th night, it goes back to the Sahab of the Prophet ﷺ. Because their Imam was sure that it was the 27th night. Um, there's also a narration, and I, I would do this whole Sahih or Da'if thing, and I'm pretty sure most of you would say that it's Da'if. There's a hadith from the Prophet ﷺ in Sunan Abi Dawood, from Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and it's as clear as it can get that the Prophet ﷺ says, Laylatul Qadri, Laylatul Sab'in wa Ishreen. Laylatul Qadr is the 27th night. It's an authentic hadith from Abu Dawood. The only argument here becomes, was this, was this mawquf to Muawiyah or was it to the Prophet ﷺ? Meaning, was Muawiyah saying that it's the 27th night based upon what I know from the Prophet ﷺ? Or was he saying that the Prophet ﷺ said that it's the 27th night? So if you go to Fath al-Bari by Ibn Hajar, you have 40 different aqwal about this, 40 different statements about this narration. Right? And people just trying to figure out, were these the words of Muawiyah based upon what he heard from the Prophet ﷺ? Or was this the Prophet ﷺ saying that? Okay? In any case, there's another hadith where the Prophet ﷺ says, also narrated by Muawiyah, إِلْتَمِسُوا لَيْلَةَ الْقَدْرِ فِي آخِرِ لَيْلَةً Seek Laylatul al-Qadr up until the last night of Ramadan. You know how the masjid dies down after the 27th? Or when, when the masjid finishes the khatm al-Qur'an, tarawih becomes really weird. You just have all these random people leading salah, and like, one guy reads Qulullah Ahad, the other guy reads Surah Maryam, and like everyone's just all over the place, and the masjid's half empty at this point, because people are doing their Eid shopping now. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi says, إِلْتَمِسُوهَا fi akhiri layla." Seek it in the last night of Ramadan. How bad would it be for the ummah? if it ended up being the last night of Ramadan, subhanAllah. So this is something we take from the Prophet ﷺ, but is there, did the Prophet ﷺ, and again, I, I told you I might come to a pretty, to a shocking conclusion, and this is why, this is my research, and I, I challenged myself on this research many, many, many times. Did the Prophet ﷺ used to worship differently on the 27th than he did from the other nights? Okay? I've read many ulama that said no, but there is actually a hadith that suggests that he did. Alright, so this is a hadith from Nu'aym ibn Ziyad, uh, which is an authentic hadith that Nu'man ibn Bashir radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said that we prayed Qiyam with the Prophet sallallahu on the night of the 23rd until one third of the night had passed. Then we prayed with him on the 25th until half of the night had passed. Then we prayed with him on the 27th until we thought we would miss Al-Falah. Al-Falah is a suhoor, they used to call it success. So meaning, in this hadith, what we see is clearly that at least in that particular year, the Prophet ﷺ prayed longer on the 27th, much longer, significantly longer, than he did on the other two nights. There's also another authentic hadith that an old man came to the Prophet ﷺ and said, Ya Nabi Allah, O Prophet of Allah, Inni shaykhun kabirun alilun, yashukku alayya al-qiyam. 
I'm an old man, I'm sick, and qiyam is hard for me. I can't, I can't pray qiyam all ten nights. فَأْمُرْنِي بِلَيْلَةٍ لَعَلَّ اللَّهُ يُوَفِّقَنِي فِيهَا لِلَيْلَةِ الْقَدْرِ so tell me what night I should really push myself so that Allah Azza wa Jal might allow me to catch Laylatul Qadr. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, عَلَيْكَ بِالسَّابِعَةِ Then focus on the seventh. So the mercy of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to that old man, either he knew that it was the 27th night that particular year, or it's always the 27th night, but the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam doesn't want us to only pray on the 27th night. Right? But there's a strong, the conclusion that we can make out of all of this is that there's a strong possibility that it is indeed the 27th night and that Allah Azawajal has directed the hearts of the Ummah on that night in particular. There's a strong possibility of that. But the Sahaba and the Prophet ﷺ, of course, first were very concerned with people just focusing on one night. And Rasulullah ﷺ used to worship Allah Azawajal for all 10 nights, and there still are some other narrations that suggests that it was another night, like the first narration of Abu Sa'id which suggested that it was the 23rd night in that particular year. So it could be that it was one year that it was definitely the 27th, one year that it was definitely the 23rd, and that you know the only way to really have harmony with all of these narrations is that it changes every year. The point is, focus. Do you focus more on the odd nights? Yes. Should you focus more maybe on the 23rd and the 27th? Should you push yourself even further? As long as it's not going to make you lazy on the other nights? Yes. Because there is evidence to suggest that. And it is indeed a, an opinion of many of the scholars of the past. In fact, um, you know, uh, Imam Shaybani claimed it as a jumhur, that it was the majority of the ulama believed it was the 27th. So there is evidence for that. There is basis for that. Push yourself, push yourself, push yourself. And, and, and keep in mind that it's a strong possibility always. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us that tawfiq. Allahumma ameen. Now what are some of the signs of Laylatul Qadr? The Prophet ﷺ says, Laylatul Qadri, Laylatun Samha. Laylatul Qadr is a soft night, it's a gentle night. لا حر ولا باردة It's not hot, it's not cold, it's a very cool night, it's a very comforting night. تصبح الشمس صبيحتها ضعيفة حمراء The sun rises that day ضعيفة حمراء it's, it's weak meaning it doesn't have rays and it's, it's a reddish complexion, it's a reddish color. So you find every year in Ramadan people taking pictures of the sun and trying to post them. Now here's the question. Was that a sign for that particular year? Like the year where the Prophet ﷺ had mud on his face. It rained a lot that night. Or was that, uh, or is that a general sign? Al-Qadi Ayyad, he says there's two possibilities. One of them is that that's a distinctive sign that Allah Azawajal has given for Laylatul Qadr. Alright, so, and, and every year you kind of look through those pictures and some of them seem a little bit more clear and you don't see the rays on them. And the second one which he said is very beautiful. He says that the amount of angels that come down on Laylatul Qadr take away the rays of the sun. <laughs> so subhanAllah, even if a lot of people were praying Qiyamul Layl on a night, the amount of malaika that were descending on the earth, their wings, the, the light of their, of, their, of their creation, dulls the light of the sun altogether. So Allah Alam, this seems to be a sign of Laylatul Qadr every year. So looking at the sun and seeing if it's rayless, it's good. However, let's say that you catch it on the 22nd you know, or 23rd night, someone posts a picture and you slept through that entire night and the sun looked absolutely rayless. Should you just say, oh well, maybe next Ramadan? No, التمسوها في آخر ليلة. Remember the hadith of the Prophet Wasallam. seek it until the very last night. Because imagine how bad you'd feel if another picture came out <laughs> later on in the, in the month and guess what? It looked, it looked rayless as well, or it looked even more rayless if that's even possible, right? So the point is, Allah left it mysterious to keep you on your toes. And the best part of Laylatul Qadr is the last part of the night, as is the best part of every night. So the best part of Laylatul Qadr is the last third of the night as well. As the Prophet ﷺ says, في الليل ساعة, that there is an hour of the night that لا يوافقها عبد مسلم يسأل الله من خير الدنيا والآخرة إلا أعطاه الله ما سأل. That there is an hour of the night that Allah subhanahu wa taala, if He gives you the tawfiq, if He gives you the success to be able to ask Allah subhanahu wa taala in that part of the night, that He would certainly give you the whatever you asked Him of this dunya and the akhirah. There is nothing you could ask Allah at that point of the night from this world or the hereafter, except that Allah subhanahu wa taala would give it to you. As for the du'as that we make that night, Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbu al-afwa fa'fu anni. O oh Allah, you are al-afu. You are the one who pardons. You love the part. You love to pardon. 
so pardon me, so forgive me. You love to forgive, so forgive me. SubhanAllah, this dua is very beautiful. In fact, there is also an authentic hadith, by the way, where the Prophet says, Allahumma innaka afuwan kareemun tuhibbu al-afwa fa'afwani. So it's also authentic to add in al-kareem. Right? The scholars say, and this is beautiful, because they're both authentic ahadith, if you bring the two together. One of them refers specifically to the hereafter, the other one refers to the hereafter and this world. Because when you invoke al-kareem, you're invoking al-kareem for matters of this world. So to say, Allahumma innaka afuun kareemun tuhibbu al-afwa fa'fu anni. Oh Allah, you love to forgive, you are generous, you are, you, you, this is who you are, oh Allah, so forgive me, so pardon me. Give me the best of this world. And hereafter, Ibn Abbas عنه, was asked about other du'as that a person should make on Laylatul Qadr. He said that, أَحَبُّ دُعَاءِ إِلَى اللَّهِ أَجْمَعُهَا He said the most beloved du'as to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the most comprehensive ones. You know, the Prophet used to teach us these one-sentence du'as.